Wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. Yeah, this is a movie I've wanted to talk about for a long time. The OG Karate Kid from 1984, 40 years ago in 2024, which is nuts. And this was directed by John G. Abelson, the late John G. Abelson, who brought you the original Rocky movie, which won Best Picture back in 1976. Here he is doing another underdog sports story, if you will. It's a coming-of-age sports story this time. And it stars Ralph Macchio as Daniel LaRusso, or Daniel San, as he's affectionately known. This is probably his most famous role. I'm just being honest. I mean, he was known for the outsiders going into this, but this is the movie I think that made him famous. So Daniel LaRusso moves to Southern California, Rosita to be more specific, with his mother because she has a new job at an up-and-coming tech company. Sounds like California to me. And Daniel quickly finds himself a fish out of water. He's the target of a group of bullies who study karate at the Cobra Kai Dojo, which is the subject matter for one of the greatest legacy sequels of all time in the Cobra Kai TV series, which I've talked about. But for Fortunately for Daniel, he befriends an unassuming repairman who works at Daniel's apartment complex named Mr. Miyagi, played by the late Pat Morita. Don't judge a book by its cover, he may not look as threatening as he is. And Miyagi takes Daniel-san under his wing and he trains him in a more compassionate, defensive form of karate. This prepares him to compete against the brutal Cobra Kai in the All Valley State Tournament at the end of the movie, and I think we all know how that turns out. When I think of nostalgic sports movies, there's three that come to mind. The Bad News Bears, Rocky, and The Karate Kid. Like, those three movies I feel like defined an era of cinema that I feel like is lost on a lot of people nowadays. Anytime The Karate Kid is on TV, I tend to pop it on anytime I see it on my cable. My parents have tended to pop it on, and it tends to pop up around the climax of the movie, and they always will watch it through. As a whole, though, The Karate Kid, not just because of the ending, it's a very fun sports movie. And I think it's just because there are so many moments within this runtime that just make you want to get up and cheer and scream, F yeah, daniel son just killed that kid. Maybe not so much, because daniel son himself is not a saint by any stretch. Ralph Macchio is very charming, very likable. It is very refreshing to also see a kid from Jersey who is not a stain on society or an asshole in any way. Not to say that all people from New Jersey are assholes, but, you know, if Jersey Shore is anything to go off of, oh boy. God help us. But you feel bad for Daniel-san, especially in the first moments of the movie when he's first acclimating to SoCal. It's a great relationship that he shares with his mother, and Randy Heller does a really, really great job in this movie. You can definitely tell that they're mother and son. You can sense it. There's a phenomenal scene towards the opening parts of the movie where Daniel is just ranting on and on, and he's throwing his bike in the dumpster. And this is just one of many great acting moments for Ralph Macchio, is this right here. No, you don't want to hear the truth. All you want to hear is how great it is out here. Well, maybe great for you, but it sucks for me. I hate this place. I hate it. I just want to go home. Like, you feel his pain, especially if you suffer from homesickness a lot of the time. That really strikes a chord with you. But I think his chemistry with everybody in this movie is fantastic. His chemistry with Allie with an eye is fantastic. Elizabeth Shue is great in this. And of course, I mean, you can't talk about the Karate Kid without talking about the late Pat Morita as Mr. Miyagi. That man, like, it was... I remember when I was a kid, growing up because I grew up watching this movie as well. It was a very, very sad day when I found out that he died. Just because I love him in this movie. I love him in this role. Like, yes, Mr. Miyagi is not the central focus of the story as he shouldn't be. He's interesting, but he comes off like the wise master. And there's no way that Daniel-san would be where he is in the tournament without his guidance and his mentorship. And he also has a super tragic backstory where his wife passed away due to complications of childbirth and his son was a stillborn. And it's like, you just want to reach through the screen and give him a hug every time that scene comes on. But there's also so many great moments of comedy with Mr. Miyagi as well. Hey, Mr. Miyagi, what belt are you? What, do you have a black belt? No. Canvas belt, department store, three ninety eight. <laughs> And it's little moments like that where you just sense some sort of mystery about this character. Because the entire time that Daniel is at Miyagi's house training in what would become Miyagi Do Karate in the Cobra Kai series, for a while it just seems like Miyagi is slaving Daniel away. Wax on, wax off on the car, sanding the floor, painting the fence. Just seems like Daniel is volunteering his time to work for Mr. Miyagi, who is an aging man. And as soon as Daniel gets frustrated, 
that's when Miyagi starts showing him the moves, and it's actually incorporated into every chore that Daniel was doing for him. Now, I understand the criticism. Yeah, he's not a good teacher because he's not actually explaining why he's having Daniel do all these chores for him. That's the key to great writing, though. This teaching is all in the subtext. Like, as soon as Daniel starts doing all those moves and defending himself against Mr. Miyagi, you don't need Miyagi to explain why he's doing it. Because it's just the looks that they're giving one another, and then Daniel's sudden realization and his understanding of it. That's what makes that teaching so effective. Now, of course, this wouldn't be a nostalgic 1980s movie if I didn't talk about the villains. Everybody that's inhabiting the Cobra Kai dojo in this, like, they need no introduction. If you've seen Karate Kid as many Many times as I have, you know who these guys are. Johnny Lawrence played here by a young William Zabka. Not to be confused with the late great Owen Hart, of course, because I know these guys are doppelgangers. But even though this guy, like, this guy has everything he has coming to him, you can't help but feel sorry for him, too, because it's like, yeah, I was in a solid relationship with Ali, and then this kid from Jersey comes into the picture. This kid from Jersey starts messing with me at a Halloween party for no reason. Yeah, if I were Johnny, I would have wanted to sweep the leg all also, not caring if I got disqualified. So I'm really glad that this Cobra Kai show exists because it actually paints Johnny Lawrence as more of an endearing, stupid hero. And I'm sure many fans of The Karate Kid are very happy to see that he's redeemed there. And he's redeemed at the end as well when he hands the trophy to Daniel. But again, you've been waiting so long to see this guy go through some sort of redemptive arc because he is a very interesting character, but it's not like the movie itself gives him enough development time. It's centered on where it should be. Daniel and Mr. Miyagi, but you wanted more out of the Cobra Kai guys. And you wanted to learn more about Kreese because, man, this guy's a nutcase. Like, why does he take this dojo so seriously? It's right next door to a freaking Walgreens. And he's acting like this is some sort of sacred temple. You're a pushy little bastard, ain't you? But I like that. I like that. Like, God, what is this guy's problem? Actually, no, I, I, I know exactly what his problem is. It's his motto. Which, of course, brings me to the classic climax that we all know and love, the great music from Bill Conti, who also composed the Rocky movies. The and, of course, the final battle where Daniel eventually kicks Johnny in the face to win the championship after overcoming all the odds with a bum knee after Kreese told his students to sweep the leg. He doesn't care if they're disqualified. He wants them to hurt this kid. God, what an asshole. And sort of a personal story, but I was given permission to tell this. My dad, 40 years ago, actually saw this movie in a theater that no longer exists where I grew up, downtown. Actually, I think that building is a hotel now, to my knowledge. But anyway, this is the same building where the previous year he saw Return of the Jedi with his cousins, and he's not kidding when he's telling this story. But basically, when Daniel uses the crane technique and he kicks Johnny in the face, his entire theater erupted in cheers. Everybody was standing up, they were applauding, everybody was loving it. And damn it, 40 years later, I still love this ending. It is still so damn satisfying. The movie as a whole is such a satisfying and enriching learning experience. For a lot of people, Miyagi's lessons still resonate with me. It's weird, it's like Yoda's teachings to Luke. Crane technique. If do right, no can defense. And as much as I love The Karate Kid and how it kind of defined a whole era of cinema, looking back on it, the movie's not perfect. I've got to take off my rose-colored glasses here. And I think the big issue is you can certainly tell that this movie was made in the 1980s. Like, you can just sense it. It certainly feels like it's a product of the time, not just in its dialogue and the cheesy nature of the villains, but John G. Ableton as a director loves to use montages. Now, in some cases, the montages are used very effectively, like in the climax, of course, You're the Best Around is a brilliant song. The opening sequence is actually a montage of Daniel and his mom's road trip out to Rosita. But when you need a montage of his first date with Allie, like, I, I don't know. I don't know if I needed that necessarily. Like, I would have liked more dialogue between the two as opposed to just clips. It's a big nitpick, but it's a nitpick nonetheless. I still love The Karate Kid. I always have, and I always will. It's one of the best nostalgic bursts of energy that you can ask for. And it's a movie that kind of redefined, in a sense, what a student-teacher relationship can look like in a big blockbuster movie. I'm gonna give the OG Karate Kid an A. Rest in peace, John G. Ableton. Rest in peace, Pat Morita. Your talents are sorely missed. And I think it's safe to say that the genius of Cobra Kai would not exist as it sits right now 
without this movie's success. But let me know what you thought of The Karate Kid down in the comments section. Let me know if this is your favorite of the series. I love discussing all new things in the cinematic world over here on the regular. If you've stumbled across this channel for the first time, do consider subscribing. Tap on that thumbs up as well. And big channel update coming up. Guys, Um, I don't know if I'm necessarily going to be churning out this content as frequently as I'd like to, especially over the next month or so, because I'm actually going to be moving at the end of September. So this studio behind me, it's going to be changing. It's the end of an era here. But I am looking forward to talking more movies with you guys once those opportunities over the next month open up. Like, I will be reviewing Beetlejuice Beetlejuice a little bit later because Lindsay would kill me if I saw the movie without her. And spoiler alert, yes, do expect to see Lindsay in my review for Beetlejuice 2. Lots of fun that's still to be had over here, guys. Y'all are the best. And with all that being said, back talk commence. Yeah.